Hey everybody, it's old folks. So I wanted to start off today, uh, Monday, with the little question and answer that I posed last week. You know, a lot of great questions came through. I've got a bunch here I'm going to answer. I won't get through all of them just because of the length it would take. I'm not really going to focus on individual team questions in some ways on this video. I'll go back and try to answer those in the comments. But this is a little bit more about, you know, obviously the game, certain characters, certain um, gameplay things, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, again, as uh, this video is done for next week, go ahead and start posting your questions that you might have for next week. Uh, and I'll do it again. You know, try to remember some stuff I can't give all the answers to, um, but I'll give you my opinion and my thoughts on it. So let's kind of go from there. The first question that somebody asked me was, is Sizo worth it? Now, Sizo is a beast. Now, I don't have him awoken. I've been working on him on my other server um, where he's only a three star. But the only way to get Sizo tokens is either A, spend gems, B, in, you know, be inside the mine, the mega mine, or C, attack people. There's not a lot of people around me. I have to be real careful when I attack because I burn because they're they're just they don't log on anymore, so then they get relocated, and so I'm 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 just struggling to get them up to 200 and something tokens. It's just taking me forever because uh, my alliance mates they're using that too because they're trying to awaken their people. So it's it's just not a great situation there. Uh, I'm hoping to get Sizo started here on his awakening quest on this account where he is uh, actually Silver Star and use him. Now on this account, there's a guy here. <laughs> I got attacked today. I, I haven't really done anything yet. Somebody just tagged me a little bit ago. But when we look at the ranking here, uh, the number two guy, he has Sizo already awoken. Um, he got him, once he hit level 85, and he dropped a ton of gems and got all the stuff day, day one. And um, he is difficult. If you don't have uh, a huge amount of damage, it's hard to burst Sizo down. Or if you're not running somebody that uh, decreases healing, you know, like a uh, um, Pandarus or a Candy, something like that. Or even Luke, not that I expect many people to run Luke, but we'll just leave that alone. Um, so is he worth it? Yes, he is. But again, at five stars, somebody said, what if he's three stars and I awaken him? He's still going to not have the hit points, which is going to increase his survivability that he would at five stars. So he can be worth it. He's just costly. Next question was, is Thanos worth, you know, getting? Um, I've got a buddy that has Thanos, and he got him awoken. He's silver-starred. Um, doesn't have Jacob. Doesn't have any of the other guys because he's focused purely on Thanos. And then um, would even spend gems in the wishing pool to get him. So the answer is, is he's gotten better with his awakening. The problem is, is the majority of people that watch this are not big VIP players. I'm not saying that to be mean. They're average guys. And if you're VIP zero, giving up a tank like Jacob is hard. So does that mean he's not worth it? You know, down the road, you get Jacob to Silver Star and you say, man, that's good enough for me. I don't want to keep, you know, wasting Soul Stones. I've wasted 300 Soul Stones. Jacob's still Silver Star. So what should I do? Well, if you feel like it, start spinning on Thanos. That's great. I, I don't think he'd be my first pick just because of the sheer amount of work it's going to take. Um, if you've got gems to blow, you know, when you get down here to the wishing pool, um, you know, come up to here and, and, and make this be your day to go for it. You know, I mean, but I'm just not going to. That's just me. So that's my thought. You know, and then somebody said, well, what's the best legendary tank, the best legendary mage, the best legendary marksman, support and cannon? Well, obviously, that's it's real easy on the cannon. When you look at the cannons, you know, I only got one. So, you know, this is my best legendary guy. You know, here, here's who your, your best cannon guy. You know, who else am I going to fight with? Um, so as you compare this list and you start looking at people, then the question comes down, who's the best mage? Well, most people are going to tell you Vortex. Vortex is a beast. He's downright one of the nastiest guys you're ever going to face. That said, Noel is pretty amazing, too. It has a lot of great um, playability. Do I think Noel beats out Vortex? It's going to be close, but I think Vortex still takes the best cake. Um, from there, you know, marksman-wise, you know, our marksman is limited here. Um, there it is. Uh, I can I can choose um, the Fluffy Boy. We'll pick him up right here, Robin. Um, there's no marksmen that are really, you know, legendaries. This guy is really not what I consider a marksman. Um, but, you know, they got to put it somewhere. So, do I like him? Yeah, I enjoy him. He's great at five stars plus. 
and get him later and you build him up he he can be really good um you know so kind of going from there in in the tank department you know it, it really comes down to a, a preference of what you're building monk song is probably the best tank next to saizo uh with saizo's awakening he got really beefy problem is is you've got to wait real late to get him where he's really good where monk song at the beginning is cheaper and his skills are great you know the knockups the stun so i mean he's a he's a got a lot of life because of his skills so i mean he's a good all-around tank Th um obviously gerber is not worth getting um i don't really consider a tank here Haley and um them are kind of okay but you know i'm not saying they're bad i'm just saying you know if i got to choose a tank it's going to be between these two um charon he's good but I still think Monk Sung's brings more to the table, uh, especially with his knockups. And, and then if you did build that one, that just makes it even better. Um, so then one of the other question is, is there too much content in the game? You know, is there just too much stuff to do? I log on and it's like, man, this is going to take me 30 minutes to get all my, um, soul, or all my soul stones I'm looking for, give my soul stones to my people, run my crusades, do my team raid, go do my... <laughs> if it's... If it's uh, Subteria, if it's time for the War Guardian, if it, I mean, there is a lot of stuff to do. Now, you don't have to do it all at one time. You can break it up over the day if you want. And you'll make sure you collect your first stamina so your second stamina comes earlier in the day. Um, but, I mean, you know, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Yes, there's more stuff to do. But as the game grows, as you hit level caps, every game's going to release it. Um, so the fact that they're released more, I think, is good. At the same time, yes, it does create a bigger gap between the haves and the haves not but at some point every game's got to have it you know um i forget that game um i used to play clash royale or something like that you know i mean they always kept adding something because you always hit a bubble and people needed more and they wanted to make more money so it's a trade-off but i think it's good but i do agree some days it takes forever you know if i've got an alliance war like i do now i'm constantly checking that i had thrown wars the other day you know i mean there's a lot of a lot of time that's required in that so we'll kind of leave it from there now one person said if i mainly focus on 80 tech you know which 80 heroes should i you know look at that are good besides mira gears and lufia for the teams in the hero brawler gen they're gonna have and then he asked you know what about grunk and pool online game so let's talk about ad heroes you know we talk about this all the time it's really limited in the sense of they haven't given us a good legendary marksman. I mean, we need somebody with a gun or a bow or a laser that's a legendary hero. But we don't get that. We get hosed, and that's what it is. So when we look at, um, you know, damage dealers, you know, these are your top four people right now um, in the game. And with Zoe getting the awakening she did, which I'm working on her too, um, I mean, you're looking at some serious damage. Zoe does a phenomenal job sue a lot of people don't still don't build sue and sue's great west has gotten a lot of love i mean the truth is is build whoever you want now if you went you know one way on the other you know panders is a phenomenal uh, damage dealer in late game his ultimate his awakening combined with the poison totem is great against teams that shield and do healing so when you start running into those aerial teams and you know stuff like that he's a great guy to have so who do i recommend in the end it comes down to you um part of me wants to build a knockback team i mean i know it sounds funny but i'd like to build a sue i'd like to build a um a zoe uh a team i'd like to build um something like that along the lines with the gears so i've got these these kind of people that are keeping stuff pushed back and then you have gears who's keeping them in that the a range so he's hitting all of them and then you know that third skill's coming in and if you can keep the tanks back from everybody um, you know, it just it allows your guys to get to their back row where the soft section is. So I, I kind of want to build a team like that, but I haven't. Um, only so much time and resources. And then what about Gr Grunk and Pulon? I like Grunk. He's situational. Uh, his awakening makes him a lot better. He's not as great as I would love him in some ways, but he's still pretty decent. It's just hard against the legendary meta for him to really be phenomenal. Um, he gets melted even easily with his shield. But when he breaks apart, Awoken, you know, that does help with some of the mitigation of who's targeting your heroes. Unfortunately, he's usually one of the last to die, which means it didn't do any good. And then what about Pulon? I like Pulon, but Pulon is weak. He still doesn't have an Awakening. 
Uh, he's helpful against the Dodge meta, but right now I think we've shifted to a Chavez meta. Um, kind of that Kaiser is going away as much. And so it's good. But, you know, again, you gotta, he's got to live to get to his ult. And uh, he has no sustainability outside of a healer. Most of the healers aren't very good. Once you get to the arena, just because, you know, they don't heal fast enough. Maybe with the new awakening of um, Muse, we'll see something. But I don't know. I mean, I like him. It's just there's a reason why there's certain tanks that are in the top. The next question was, what's the easiest way to get a legendary hero? The short answer is, there is no easy way. Now, you can get lucky. If you're VIP 1 or above, you can get lucky on a um, treasure event. You could get really lucky on a wheel event. Um, it's just kind of hard. You might be on a server where perhaps you don't have a lot of big spenders, and you might get a, a legendary by being one of the top guys um, from the, uh, the events, you know, where you end up in the final top three and you get the full hero that might work too uh, i mean i don't know i had a one of my son's servers that my middle son plays on i think the top spending for when they had uh, noel was like 13 uh 30, 13 000 gems which was cheap and he's like would you buy me more i'm like no you're out of luck so sorry son um so that's kind of about the easiest way to get it the wishing pool um I mean, down here, you know, you can get these guys the cheapest, but a three-star legendary just doesn't fly late game. I mean, you I hate to say it, by the time you're level 80, if there's still three stars, you're gimping yourself. I have an entire account made of three-star legendaries, and it's worthless. It is what it is. Uh, next question kind of comes down, what's the best team without legendary heroes for you? <laughs> I can't answer that. Um, for me, it, you know, it varies. I like uh, Dwizzles. Obviously, I, I'm an AD guy. I like that. Um, but, you know, we I'm going to kind of kill two birds with one stones here. You know, what about my top four mages that aren't legendaries? Well, obviously, Blaine's a huge hitter. Uh, toss it in Emi, a Diakin. Um, you could toss in a Salmon, uh, a Delphos. Support-wise, you're obviously going to be running Merlin um, because you want that uh, AE lifesteal or the lifesteal ability. <laughs> You know, or even a Kong mean kind of in there. You know, a, a magical team is a powerful team in this game free-wise. That's what it is. Um, so usually you're going to see a lot of your better free, you know, no legendary teams built around magic users. Um, they'll run a Chavez for a tank, uh, or they'll run a Jacob for a tank because they're going to partner that with the Merlin. And then they're going to have a Blaine in there. So there's your three right there. And then from there... It's going to be dependent upon each individual person. Media is good because she's got a silence, works well with Blaine. People like Diocon because she comes in, Diochan, however you say her name, comes in at the end if she can stay alive and just kills people with their ults as they start dropping. Um, people like Delphos for those single target um, tanks where he just shreds through them. Or Gorgana as the fight goes on, obviously she gets more powerful. Salmon's a great buffer uh, for the team. So there's a lot of great options. Those are kind of the free ones. But again, if you're not spending gems, you're really dependent upon what you get out of the wishing pool um, when you use your free wishes. That's kind of my answer right there for all you guys when it comes to magic people or kind of best free teams. Um, you know, what about uh, pool on or Loria for long-term uses when you look at tanks? Uh, again, Loria got a buff uh, recently, a few patches back. She's gotten better, and you'll see her in some high teams, and she is a good tank. Pool on again, he's not bad. But he's still just kind of weak, very limited in his usage, uh, can get burnt down real quick. That's funny on a snowman, by the way. It was a joke. <laughs> Sorry. So, you know, long-term usage, it's going to depend. I'm not going to throw Loria at an AD team, but if I'm going against an AP team and she's built up, I'm going to use her. Now with the whole Subteria, she's great because you're going to fight a Grunk and she's a flyer. So, you know, I use her even at level 64 uh, when I fight Grunk. So... I'm probably going to lean more towards Loria, um, just kind of in-game stuff. You know, some of the strengths of Heroes and War Guardian, you know, say, how is it my West, who's lower level and less gear, does more damage than my Jolie? Jolie's specialty is her um, ultimate, but more importantly is that slow she does at the beginning, which West doesn't have. West does better single-hit damage and then firing in a cone, which is great on certain maps and positions. Jolie has a bigger um, area that she can encompass with her stuff, and so, 
that's why sometimes there is a damage difference between, you know, even though somebody's a higher level and better gear um, on why they're doing more damage, you know, that's kind of the main reason for that. Um, got a question here was, you know, this whole Edwin thing, you know, ultimate of Edwin. When you use it and then your other team members use their ults, what happens? They don't get hit by it. You know, if I, my computer ults Edwin's and then throws, Thana, um, throws Vortex in right after, my Vortex ult misses. Uh, that's kind of one of the bad things you have to think about sometimes when Edwin's on your team is when he gets his little blue circle going. If your guy's popping ult, it's going to miss. You know, you pop your Edwin ult, and right as the Edwin ult's going off, you pop your Poulon ult. Nobody's frozen. <laughs> you know, it is it is what it is. Um, sometimes people will go into the ult with an effect like, um, let me see here, like Teresa's uh, little thing that you see on her skill. I'm going to pull it up. Boop, boop, boop. The magic scorch, um, basically where they're dealing damage, um, that magic mark is going on there. They still take damage afterwards, but not, uh, not during it kind of thing. It pops at the end, so that's why sometimes we wonder if they're taking damage. Um, you know, if all your items were level 15, and you know you could choose out of them, which one would you choose? Well, you know, obviously a lot of people are going to run Robert's Gauntlet on Blink because they want the early one. Um, you know, some people talk about the Force Knock book, but the majority of them still run, um, that. It, it kind of depends. You know, let's look at, let's pull up here for fun, Vortex. This is lifesteal. Um, this for him, you know, gets him, uh, 12% lifesteal back. You know, I mean, that's why I run it. It doesn't seem like a lot. Um, if I chose here, you know, he's getting 2,000 health. Well, gosh, man, that's, that's nothing at this level. That gets shot off real quick, you know, and if I'm doing... 150,000 damage and I'm getting let's just say 10% well I've gained 15,000 health obviously that's a better turnaround um, this shield ring it, it doesn't do me any good um, the bleak scepter um, deals increased damage to enemies with lower than 35% health it's great to finish them um, you know and if I had this level 15 I'd probably use it but I don't so I mean you know it's situational every every person's different um all items equal you can't say I'm just going to use the orange one just because I have it you know you really have to think about what fits best on your hero um, almost done here so I have so I blame Mira and Murphy I said I wasn't going to answer these questions but I have a couple as my main heroes and I run Jacob and Gerber but I want to change Gerber should I use Chavez or Ka and Kaiser and you know the question is is um, you're running a magic team basically with Blaine and Murphy, and you've got Jacob. So if you're going to run a second tank, run Chavez, because Chavez is going to get that lifesteal from Merlin um, kind of thing. So I, I would run I would run Chavez. Um, kind of think about how they work together, the synergy of that. Um, people say, you know, what about other supports that I might run? If you're running a uh, mage team, you know, usually I'm going to run Merlin for the, the lifesteal. Muse isn't bad against the physical team, but she's not going to, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of one of those things, pick and choose what works best for you. You're going to get more healing out of Merlin for the team if you have a uh, magic team than if you put Muse in there because she's only going to heal an individual here or there. So it's better to go for the whole team. Um, and then finally, the last question was, you know, is it better to star out my legends or invest my diamonds in dragon prayers? You know, because Let's say you get a three-star hero, and you think, man, I'm going to drop 20K into prayers. That might seem good, but the problem that you're going to run into is you've still got a three-star hero. So let's say you've got um, Monk Sung, uh, and, you know, he's one of the, the easiest ones to level up, cheapest-wise. I would level up Monk Sung. I mean, prayers are nice. You can, you can slowly work there with, you know, the, the cash prayer. Um, ones you can get a, a, a one dot off of cash only I would focus on getting first the the stars the stars are more important uh, you put a four star three or a three star four dot guy up against a, a, a five star two or three dot guy he's probably gonna mow him over equal equal level uh, just because those stars give so much health and everything else um, I hope that helps. That's kind of all I got for today. Uh, I didn't really want to get too much into teams, but I want to talk a little bit about compositions, which is why that uh, second to last question. But if you got any more guys for next week, feel free to ask them. I'll gladly answer them. Hope you guys are having a great week. And I